welcome to Being Brainy, brought to you by Brain Research New Zealand. My name is Bronwyn and I'm a neuroscientist, or in other words, I'm a brain scientist. And it's my job to study how the brain works and if things go wrong with the brain, how we might try and fix it. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about how we learn and how we form memories. And we're gonna do some cool experiments. In order to do the experiment, what you're going to need is some paper, a pen, and a pe or a pencil. So what is a memory? Or what is learning? So memory is our ability to remember things that we've experienced from our past. So sometimes our memories are thoughts or pictures in our head. And sometimes we use our memory without even thinking about it. Learning is what happens when our brain cells change to create a memory. Now, what is something that you learned this week at school that you can now remember? We use our memory in many different ways. and Some of them might surprise you. We can use our memory to remember experience we had, like what we ate for breakfast, or what games we played at lunchtime yesterday. But we also use our memory to do things such as riding our bike or tying our shoes. So whereabouts do we store these memories in the brain? Well, they're stored in a special area, which is important for making and storing memories. And you have an area of your brain here, which is known as the temporal lobe. And this is the area that stores the memories. And underneath the temporal lobe, in here, is this tiny little area called the hippocampus. And here's a picture of it. And here, a little bit closer up. And hippocampus means seahorse. So if you use your imagination here, you might see there's the head of the seahorse and its body going around like this. But this is the area of your brain where you learn. And when you learn, it then makes connections out to the temporal cortex to form a memory. So the hippocampus has many special neurons and they talk to other neurons in many different areas of your brain, particularly the temporal cortex where your memories get, st get stored. So when you experience something new, your memory gets made or you learn something by the neurons getting activated and generating an action potential or an electrical signal that then communicates and sends a chemical signal to another neuron, which then passes that information down onto another neuron. And what's really cool is that when you experience something new, a specific or a special set of neurons get activated. And that's what helps you to keep your memories different and separate. So if we think here, we learned something new, we've learned how to tie our shoes. And this is the red cells here are the cells, the brain cells that get activated when you're learning and remembering how to tie your shoes. So the more times you do it, the first time you do it, these are the special cells or the specific cells that get activated. And then every time you tie your shoes and you learn it and it becomes a memory and you don't have to think about it, these are the same cells that keep getting activated. On the other hand, if you learn to ride your bike, these yellow cells get activated. And the more times you ride your bike until it becomes automatic and you just jump on your bike and ride it, then it's still these yellow cells that get activated. And that's really important because we need to have different sets of cells being activated for different activities. Otherwise, you might get confused with how to put your, tie your shoes up versus how to ride your bike. And we have different types of memory. So sometimes we only need to remember things for a short time. So can you think about a few things that you only need to remember for a short amount of time? 
So that might be an instruction that the teacher's just given you. Take out your workbook and turn to page five. Or it might be um, the color that you need to color something in. You need to color the fish in blue. Once you've done it, you don't need to remember it anymore. So if you only need to remember something for about 30 seconds, this information is stored in a part of your memory that's called the short-term memory. And your short-term memory can usually only remember about seven things at once. So if you think about it a bit like boxes I've got drawn here on a conveyor belt, you can only have seven boxes on the conveyor belt at once. And as the conveyor belt moves along, you get a new memory, short-term memory, the oldest one will fall off. And that's why you can only remember it for a short period of time. So for example, if your mum gives you seven instructions of things to do, feed the cat, feed the dog, walk the dog, put out the rubbish, empty the dishwasher, and vacuum the house. You can remember those seven things, but then when she says to you, and fold your clothes, you'll forget the first one. It falls off. So we can only remember about seven things at one time. On the other hand, if you need to remember something for a long time, such as how to ride a bike, this is stored in your long-term memory. And your long-term memory can store memories for minutes, hours, days, or even years, or for the entire rest of your life. So just have a think, what is the earliest memory you have? Can you remember back when you were two years old? Can you remember learning to tie your shoes? Can you remember Christmas when you were two years old? Think about how long ago your first memory it was. And so these are the memories that get used over and over again, and they become really solid and really persistent, and they stay in your brain for a really long time, sometimes for your whole life. Now, we're gonna do our little experiment, and we're gonna do our picture memory game. So you might have done something a bit like this as a game um, in, with your family or at school. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a picture for about two minutes. And then after two minutes, I'm gonna hide the picture. And one minute later, I'm gonna show it to you again, okay? And I'm gonna ask you some questions about that picture. Okay, so get your piece of paper and your pen ready. And I'm gonna show you the picture now for two minutes.
Okay, now I'm going to take the picture away and we're going to wait for one minute. Okay, right. Now, let's see how much you can remember. So, here are the questions. See how many you can get right. What were the three animals in the picture? Besides the animals, what other living things were there in the picture? How many objects were there all together in the picture? What two items could you put on your feet? What three items could you eat or drink? What two musical instruments did you see? What two items used electricity? And which of these items was not in the picture? A vase, a bone, or a frog? Okay, so let's have a look at the answers. So there we go. So how many items did you remember correctly? So if you got at least five of them right, then you did really well. And because you had to remember the pictures for longer than one minute, you were using your long-term memory. So try it that again at home. Try it with your brothers and sisters. Give them a test. See how good they do. But there are a number of ways in which you can actually make your memory better. And these are really good if you've got to study for a test. So you can do things such as paying attention. Listen to your teacher. You're better at forming memories if you're listening and thinking about the information at the same time. Repetition. Remember I said that the more times you stimulate those neurons for that specific memory, the stronger the connections they get and the stronger the memory gets. So repetition, repeating the information. That means that your neurons are going to get stronger Connections between them are going to get stronger and it's going to be easier to recall the memory. Breaking information down. So instead of trying to learn a whole lot of stuff, remember we can only remember about seven things at a time, separate a lot of information into smaller bits. So it makes each bit easier to remember. Such as 021, 896, 475. Is much easier to remember than 021 896 475.
and then use what we call mnemonics or a catchy phrase or a system to remember lots of information. So this is one that can be used to remember the planets in the solar system. My very educated mother just served us noodles. That stands for Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Well, I hope you enjoyed that one. And like I said, test your brothers and sisters, test mum and dad, see how well they do on that long-term memory test. But hope you had fun and we'll see you again next time.